What if I told you that in this exact moment, someone has a brilliant idea how to cure cancer? Someone else has a brilliant idea how to solve the waste problem, the clean energy, the cleaning of the ocean. What if I tell you now that those people will never work on those brilliant idea just because they were born in some part of the world? We have plenty of challenges in the future as human race, and we will solve those better if we work together and we will solve them faster. In this way, we are losing brain power just because more than half of the world cannot do science. Um, there are naturally a lot of different problems here. Um, political problems, economical problems, uh, but I'm not a politician, I'm not an economist. Who am I? So, I'm Vittorio Sajomo, I'm a researcher and I work at university. In the next few minutes, I will tell you why, in my opinion, as a scientist, we are not doing enough to solve this problem. Now let's go a step back. What is science? When I was back in Italy for my master thesis, um, I was lucky enough that I attend the um, last lecture of one of my organic chemistry professors, and he told us something that stuck with me for a very long time. He told us, look, science is like building a house. This is not something that you can do alone. In your life as a scientist, you can only make some bricks, put them in place so that other scientists can build on top of them. After some time, building, building, you get the house. So the brick that we are putting out is the knowledge that we are publishing, and we do these publishing papers. So hypothetically, in a perfect world, this should be, this research should be open, meaning that everyone can read it for free, should be accessible, meaning that any, as much people as possible, as many people as possible can do it. So if I'm using a machine that it's very expensive, not that many people can reproduce my experiment. If I'm using something very cheap, then many people can reproduce it. So my science is already more accessible. And naturally, <laughs> and naturally reproducible meaning that if you are doing my same experiment, you should get my same result. We are not living in a perfect world, so if you are applying for a job at university, if you are applying for an advancement in career, or even for money, those points are rarely evaluated. What is evaluated is the number of papers that you are publishing. The more, the better. And this creates a couple of problems. First of all, if you are forced to publish as many papers as possible, you are under a lot of pressure, so you are start making honest mistakes. If there are mistakes in the research, it means that it's not as reliable as it should be. There are few papers that are actually completely fake, so they just publish without doing the research. So the research was fake from the start to the end. This is one point. What they also take in account if you are publishing in fancy journal. For fancy journal, I mean something like nature or science. Those journals are not open. I need to pay 10,000 euro for making my research open so that everyone can read it. Otherwise, the reader needs to pay 50 euro for reading my research. If I publish the exact same research on an open journal, my evaluation will be lower. Remember, it's the same research. So it means that actually the journal where I publish is more important than the research that I did. Another point of those journal is that sometimes they don't give you the instruction for reproducing the experiment. And I'm going to repeat this. They don't give you the instruction for repeating the experiment. It's like going to IKEA, buying your furniture, coming back home, opening the package. There are no instructions. There is only one single note. You pick up the note, you read it, and it says, good luck. <laughs> Do you think this is normal? Because this is quite normal in science, not publishing all the data that it's possible to publish. So if you are looking only at those two points, you are actually hindering scientists and science in general. And instead of this, now let me show what our laboratory is doing for open science and open technology. And the first part, it's about microfluidics. 
So microfluidics is just a small device for making experiment on a single drop of liquid. Those are very expensive, very difficult to make, and you cannot really make them in any laboratory. What we did instead, we pick up a 3D printer, very cheap 3D printer, it can cost between 150, 200 euro. You can find them everywhere. Independently, if it's a rich country, if it's a or lower income country, you can find them everywhere. We pick up this printer, we pick up a little bit of nail polish, and we can manage to have beautiful microfluidic device. Those, now you can make them at home. They cost a few cents, they are made of this plastic, and they are practically indestructible. Then, if you can find it, you can keep it. <laughs> they are cheap. <laughs> then, we still have another problem, is how to move the liquid inside those microfluidics. Usually, they use syringe pumps. Those syringe pumps are just devices that push a syringe for moving a liquid inside. A single one, the cheapest that you can find, costs 500 euro. We did something else. We say, let's pick up the same 3D printer, destroy it, which doesn't make any sense now, and with the part of the 3D printer, we can make three syringe pumps. Now, with a single 3D printer, you can have all of this. This research now is open technology because other people can build on top of it and making even new innovation on top of it, independently if your laboratory is rich or not. You can literally do those experiments at home. Another thing that we did last year was during the coronavirus and was about testing for the coronavirus. The best test that you can have is detecting the nucleic acid of the virus. For doing that, you need to use this machine. This machine, the cheapest that you can find, costs 8,000 euro. It's difficult to operate and it's expensive. We can do better. Imagine instead of using this machine, you just have your test, you put it in a coffee pot, you put it in boiling water, and 20 minutes later you have your test. Now, stop imagining it because this is exactly what we did. So, this is the coffee capsule. Inside, there is some wax that keeps the temperature constant. This costs less than one euro, and is as good as a machine that costs 8,000 8, euro. It's, you can reuse it, so you don't throw it away. You can reuse it, and it's also um, not only useful for COVID or for coronavirus, but we also tested with malaria, with the lesmaniosis, and few cups of them are already in West Africa for a pilot. It's also easy to the environment because everything in here can be recycled, is biodegradable, or can be burned away. Now, all of those things are open science. We spend a lot of time in putting all the blueprints online, everything for free. A lot of time in making the guides, step-by-step -step guides, so that people can reproduce it, how to use it, and so on. And we really spend a lot of time on that. All of those time is not rewarded. So, we did it because this is the right thing to do. Now, the thing that bothered me most is that this assessment was not pushed on us. We, as a scientist, a couple of generations ago, decided this was a good way to assess research. Now we know that this is not the case, and if we want, we can change it. Because remember, innovation is useless if only few people can use it. So let's get together, let's work together, change the assessment for having a better science and a more inclusive science. Thank you. <laughs>